okay, I might like morph into a physicist teacher in the middle of this and mess around and teach you a little bit about thermodynamics on accident. So just bear with me, you'll get through it. Stuff will burn in this video. It's just that we gotta bless the whiteboard out for a second. Hey, what's up fellas? I got a pretty cool video about propane tanks today that you guys might like. Have you ever wondered how much power you can actually get out of one of these things? Um, this right here is one of those Harbor Freight Rosebud burners. It's a great burner, but they're lying right to your face. They say it's a 500,000 BTU torch, and it, it might be if you hooked it up to a, a propane truck. But hooked up to one of these bottles, you will never get more than 90 kilowatts of power, which is 307,000 BTUs. So you're not getting anywhere near 500,000 BTUs out of a propane bottle. And not only that, you can only hold that 90 kilowatts for a, a minute or two before the bottle starts to get cold and boiling on you. And then it starts to freeze. I don't know if you've ever seen the ice forming at the bottom. Why does that happen? What is the actual reason for the liquid getting cold when it boils? So these right here are liquid propane burners. Um, this is a one megawatt propane burner. It could probably do a little bit more with higher pressure. By the way, this is what a one megawatt propane burner looks like. Pretty extensive piece of kit. We are running this thing a little full bore here. It would need a little bit more vaporization to it, it would appear. It likes to run in the 800 kilowatt range a little bit better, but it could do it. If this thing was in a hot firebox, we'd be we'd be rolling down the road here. But right there is, uh, I believe that was about 800 kilowatts, so right under a megawatt, but still pretty phenomenal output on this thing. And we're doing that off a of barbecue grill propane tank, guys. So that is the power of liquid propane. See that vaporizer box getting some frost on it? Fire and ice, man. I love it. Pretty freaking cool. And this box right here is hollowed out and liquid propane is injected into there. And as you can tell by the colors, it has not reached red hot temperatures or nothing. It's hit about 600 degrees Fahrenheit. And that vaporizes the liquid propane that is injected into this bottom port. And it is then vaporized. Same thing with this test model here. We have a hollowed out canister where liquid propane is injected. Now this burner is meant to be face downward into a brick kiln with these flipped over, of course. And the liquid propane would go inside this burner flange and be boiled to give us far more power than you could get out of a gas system. Not to mention this tiny line can provide 800 kilowatts in the case of this burner. And for this one, you can get about 967 kilowatts is what I have cataloged, but it was cold outside. So you could probably do better with 75 degree ambient. So let's take a look at our hot atom versus our cold atom and we'll see why it actually gets cold. Okay, fellas, so all the thermal energy is lost at the gas liquid interface, okay? And the reason that happens is you've got molecules vibrating in the fluid, which eventually reach the, reaches the phase change temperature. And as it reaches the phase change temperature, you'll have these vibrating atoms that are below the surface that will hit a surface atom and knock it off of the surface of the fluid into the gaseous phase. And this, and this is what happens when that takes place. You've got your high speed atom vibrating just fine, and then it hits an atom and flings it off into the, into the gaseous phase, or let's say it's doing this, it hits the atom above it, this gets flung off, and see how cold that is now? This is an instant in time. We're at like three Planck's constants here, okay? So it's not even nowhere near a second yet. So we got a vibrating atom, Okay, it hits an atom above it that's now flung off into the vapor phase. This was liquid, it's now hitting the vapor phase. So now what happens when this cold atom hits another high speed atom? Well, 
Let's zip here. Okay, here's our high speed atom. Here's our cold atom. Bam! We have now effectively cooled that atom off. So let's look at the illustration of what I'm trying to show you here. So our, our atom underneath the surface has finally reached the energy needed to knock this atom out into the vapor phase. So there's our collision. Now we've got our low speed atom, which now gets hit by this atom, okay? And it robs energy from this guy, knocking off maybe, you know, that many of its points. So now it's not vi vibrating very fast. So now one of these other high speed ones hit it, and it's a cascading effect on an atomic level across the entire surface area interface of the gas liquid phase. The same thing happens at the bubble interface. These little packets of energy are sent into this little bubble space and then they're taken away. So it's expecting to get its collision back and it doesn't. So you end up with this slow vibrating atom because it just hit an atom that is now inside this bubble right here, which is now floating away out of the tank. So that little vibrational packet of, it, of energy is transferred to a gas molecule in the bubble that takes off, escapes, robs the whole thing, freezes the whole thing to death. Now, don't quote me on this. I pretty much am a high school dropout, so I haven't seen a physicist tell you this. This is just what I came up with. This is what I see going on. It's gotta be, I mean, I don't know what else it could be, so. So, how do you determine the power output of a propane burner? Well, what you do is you weigh the tank before and after a certain set of time that you've run the burner. There are 3,600 seconds in an hour. So we ran 188 seconds and we burned 6.8 pounds, which comes out to 130 pounds an hour. There are 21,548 BTUs in one pound. So that comes out to 2,805,000 BTUs or so. We're close to that, that's a, a, an average. And it's about 822 kilowatts. So quite a bit of power. You would only be able to get 90 if we were just using the gas out of the bottle. And like I said, at this temperature, we probably wouldn't be able to do that. So that is why we use liquid propane. This device, see how I got the bottle inverted upside down? This is what's inside of a propane bottle. You've got this little shutoff valve, I guess, for when they're filling it up. I'm not 100% sure what that does. I think what this does is, see this little siphon hose? When they're filling these tanks up, I think this valve will go up and maybe some liquid will come squirting out of here to show them that it's full. I'm not positive on that. If anyone knows what this valve does, hit us up in the comments. That's my theory. Because you see this dumb little straw right here? I don't know why I call it dumb. But I bet this straw is connected to this port and when this thing goes all the way up, I don't know if it's pushing on that or what. At any rate, you see this hole right here? That's where we're getting our propane. So the size of that hole, you guys, I think may be our limiting factor. At the size of that hole is limiting us to right around 3,300,000 BTUs based on the testing that I've done. So. That's kind of another interesting little thing about it. Also, take note of the blue flame here. We're not getting that red, crazy color we were getting in the testing we were doing the other day because this batch of propane wasn't full of all that oil and mercaptan crap. Plus, I've been turning these bottles upside down so much lately that it's possible I've just finally got all the oily gunk and mercaptan out of the tanks. So. All right, same burner, oh, this red outside. flame. So what the heck's going on here? You may come across this in your journeys. Um, it's not because it's daylight out, it's because some propane tanks have a lot of oil in them. Look at this. Spray some of this in there. You see that oil already. You see all that? Look at that. The 
this may be some of the worst propane I've ever seen do this. And we're just going to sit here and kind of watch these heavy ends boil. Now, I've read a lot in the uh, forums trying to figure out what happened the other day about, they say oil is a result Another of the tanking. Another group of people on the forums who claim to work with propane for a living said that that is called heavy ends. And that some grades of propane are just crappier than others. And one of these people was a mechanic who worked on cars that ran on propane or like buses, I guess, that they have. And there's a vaporizer in there. And he said their vaporizers get gunked up with this crap all the time. So that's kind of what that color that we're seeing is. It's the Mercaptan and the heavy end oils and all that stuff. Very complete combustion. 